Welcome back to the drug math tutorial for emergency clinicians. This is lesson two. In lesson one, we uh, covered some different weight conversions, converting uh, milligrams into micrograms and vice versa, and how to convert pounds into kilograms. So if you don't know how to do that, go back and review lesson one before moving on. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about some different types of drug packaging and the different things that you might have to use when administering different medications. Okay, so you can see in this image there's different uh, sizes of medication packages and that's going to come into play when we talk about the different components. So we're going to cover a few things. We're going to cover what the different components of the master formula are. And if you don't know what the master formula is, I'm going to go over that as we move on to the next lessons. Uh, but it's basically a universal formula to give any medication dose or almost any medication dose because uh, I'm not sure maybe there is a dosage that won't fit into the master formula but any dose that I can think of you can use the master formula so one of those components is the desired dose and basically the desired dose is just what you want to give the dose that's ordered or the dose that are, is in your standing protocol or guideline okay um, we're going to talk about weight we'll talk about the solution set, and we're going to talk about the concentration. Okay, and then we'll discuss what the ultimate goal is when considering drug calculations. All right. So again, the desired dose is the actual order you're going to carry out. It holds all the information you're going to need to determine how many more calculations you have to do. Some desired doses are very simple, and some are a little bit more complex. All right. So. To give you an example of how the desired dose helps you, if you see a dose that's 2 milligrams per kilogram, that kind of lets you know you're going to need to convert the patient's weight from pounds into kilograms to be able to deliver that dose. That is a weight-based dose because it's per kilogram. Not all dosages are. All right, so there are many different possible forms for a desired dose. You could have the form of 5 milligrams or 5 milligrams per kilogram or five milligrams per kilogram per minute. And obviously, as we go down the line here, it gets more difficult to uh, calculate those dosages. Five milligrams is gonna be really easy to calculate. Five milligrams per kilogram, that's a weight-based dose, so that's gonna be uh, basically your dose times the patient's uh, weight in kilograms. And then five milligrams per kilogram per minute is a weight-based drip or infusion. So when the desired dose includes a weight component, you know you're going to have to obtain the patient's weight and convert it to kilograms, as I said before. So all of these are different examples, uh, 5 milligrams per kilogram, 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, or 20 milliliters per kilogram. That would be a volume dose. The choice of the solution set becomes very important when calculating a drip. All right, so the time component per minute that tells you that you will be calculating a drip or an infusion. We said that when we see per kilogram, that means it's a weight-based dose. When you see per minute, that means it's going to be a drip or an infusion. It's over time, so you're going to have to calculate drops per minute when you see that. There are a couple different types of uh, solution sets. They're separated into macro and mini. All right, So you might hear a mini drip or a macro drip. The 10 drops, 15 drops, and 20 drops per ml are all types of macros. Uh, 60 drops per milliliter is a mini uh, or micro. And GTTS, that just stands for drops. So whenever you see GTTS, don't get confused. That just really means drops. Whenever you hear CC, sometimes you'll hear somebody say, I need to give 20 CCs. That is the same thing as saying ml or milliliter. ml or milliliter, can you see that? All right, so that's all that's saying. Uh, so let's talk a, a second about these different drip sets. We said that one of them is 10 drops per ml or milliliter. What does that mean? What that means is if you take that drip set, let's take a, a bag, okay, a saline bag here. And if we spiked it with the drip set, a 10 drop set, 10 drops per ml, and we ran that tubing, kind of a horrible drawing here, 
But that's my IV tubing. And let's put a little cup here. Every 10 drops that comes out, you're going to have one milliliter of fluid. Okay? So if you had a syringe, we do a lot of drawing. If you had a syringe that was equal to one ml, you would need to just put 10 drops using that 10 drop set. Kind of intuitive. I mean, that's what that means, 10 drops per ml. Well, how do you know how many drops comes out? Because you're not necessarily watching the end of this. It'll be plugged into an IV catheter for the most part. There's a drip chamber right about there, and you count the drops as they come down. All right, so we're going to get into the different drug mass, and you're going to see that you're going to want to be able to count the drops per minute or plug it into your uh, IV pump. Now, IV pump settings are a lot of times they are mLs per hour, and mLs per hour is equal to drops per minute. It's the same thing, okay? I'll explain that later on. So that's solution sets. Again, 10 drops per milliliter means that for every 10 drops you have, you have one milliliter or one cc uh, infused. The choice of solution set will be very dependent on the amount of fluid that you need to infuse. If you're trying to do a volume resuscitation to somebody, let's say you have somebody that's in hypovolemic shock and their pressure is 70 over palp and you're trying to you know, get some volume in them, you're not going to want to go with a mini drip. You're not going to want to go with that 60 drop set. You're going to want to use a macro drip, like a 10 drop per milliliter set so you can get more volume in quicker. Uh, drug dosages, you're generally going to give most infusions using a mini drip, a, a micro drop set. A lot of IV pumps force you to use a macro sometimes, uh, but that's going to count the amount of drops that are going in. It's going to count the amount of milliliters going in for you. It's going to do all the math for you for the most part. But when you're using a micro drop set and you're doing this by eye, uh, it's a lot. It's going to be a lot easier for your infusions using that that mini drop set. We'll talk about that later on too. So certain me medications require doses that will always be easier to administer using specific drip sets, and that's kind of what I was just saying. Some medications, the number will be so high to count the drops per minute that you're going to want to go with a macro set, uh, you know, the 10 drop or 20 drop set. Those medications might include amiodarone or mag sulfate or procainamide because they're given in 10 to 20 minute increments. Like you're giving, uh, for instance, amiodarone, you're going to give 150 milligrams over 10 minutes. And that's basically a loading dose. And the only reason you're giving it over 10 minutes in the first place is you just don't want to drop their blood pressure too much. That will happen if your patient has a pulse and you slam 150 milligrams in, you're going to cause them to be hypotense. So we give it over 10 minutes and you're going to want to use a 10 drop set. But if you're doing an infusion over time or maintenance drip, that's when you're going to go with your mini drip set, such as with Tridol or Diprovan or Dopamine. Those drugs, it's very, very important not to use uh, something that's going to infuse too much volume too quickly. You're going to want to use something that you can really titrate. All right, now let's talk about the concentration. The concentration simply refers to how much drug is in a specific amount of volume. So when you open up a vial of a medication, it's going to say how many milligrams or how many grams of that drug are in there, and then it's going to give you the total volume of that vial, let's say 10 mLs or 100 mLs. Okay, so it gives you the amount of drug and the amount of volume, the amount of liquid in that vial. The goal is to reduce the concentration to a 1 mL. All right, so you're not going to actually take out all of the volume and only leave one ml, but you want to know how much drug exists for every milliliter there. For instance, 400 milligrams in 100 ml vial. Okay, let's say we have 400 milligrams in 100 ml vial. What we're going to want to do is get this 100 down to 1. How do we get 100 down to 1? Well, you divide it by itself, right? You divide 100 by 100 and you get 1. So we did that, 100 divided by 100 is 1 ml. You don't have to write the 1. 400, now we have to divide it by the same number. 400 divided by 100 is 4, right? Because 4 times 100 equals 400. So we end up with a reduced concentration of 4 milligrams per milliliter. And that's important to be able to do as you move on. 
I just want to make a quick note. The correct abbreviation for milliliter is a large uppercase L, not the way I have it here with the two lowercase letters, but it's a lowercase M and an uppercase L. That would be the correct abbreviation, so I don't want to get you in trouble on any tests if you have a teacher that's looking at your abbreviations. Okay, so where do you find this concentration? If you look at the drug packaging on the box generally or on the vial itself, it's going to tell you what the concentration is. So this box here of atropine tells you you have one milligram per 10 mLs. It also tells you the reduced concentration over here already, but let's pretend it didn't. You would take this 10, and you divide it, 10 by 10 equals 1, and 1 divided by 10 is 0.1. Okay, so this is a 0.1 milligram per milliliter reduced concentration of atropine in that pre-filled syringe there. All right, now if you're doing a drip or an infusion, you're going to have to put the drug into the bag, right? If you're doing an infusion, you're going to take whatever medication you have and you're going to put that in the bag if it's not already pre-mixed for you. So for instance, if we took this dopamine and we added it to this bag of saline, 250 milliliters, your concentration is going to be however much dopamine you have here, 400 milligrams, in that 250 milliliters. Okay, so now you'd have 400 milligrams in that 250 milliliters, but don't forget you did have that little 5 mLs. It's not going to make that big of a difference, okay, if you don't change this to 255, because that would be the correct dose. You could take, if you wanted to, you could take the 5 mLs out of that saline bag there, and then, you know, then reduce it, because it's easier math that way. It really isn't that important. Um, but that would be exact. If you put 400 milligrams into a 250 bag and you had 5 mLs over here, you're going to have 255 mLs when you're done, and you're going to have 400 milligrams of the drug in there. 400 milligrams and 255 mLs. So again, to fix this, you're going to take 5 mLs out of the bag prior to adding the medication to keep the uh, concentration to 400 milligrams and 250 mLs. If that's confusing to you, all I'm saying is this vial here is 5 mLs. So when you add it to this bag of saline, you're actually going to have 255 mLs or milliliters. So you could take that 5 milliliters out of the bag first. So that way you end up with 250 mLs, which is really much, much easier math to, to uh, reduce that concentration. So the medication variable in the concentration should be converted to the variable within the desired dose. That must not make sense to you yet, but let me, let me explain it to you. All right, so you have your desired dose here. Let's say your desired dose is 5 micrograms per kilogram. And we have a vial of drug, 500 milligrams and 50 mLs. What I'm saying is, whatever your desired dose is, for instance, it's in micrograms here. If your desired dose is in micrograms, your concentration must be changed to micrograms. All right, so you're going to want to take your desired dose from micrograms and convert it to millig or <laughs> your concentration from milligrams and convert it to micrograms. I kind of went over that in lesson one. So we have micrograms here. We want micrograms on the bottom. You take that 500. You multiply it by a thousand because for every one milligram you have a thousand micrograms. So 500 times a thousand, or just add three zeros, and you end up with 500,000 micrograms and 50 mLs. Now let's reduce that down to 1 mL, and you end up with 10,000 micrograms in 1 milliliter, or in 1 mL. Okay, And it's important to be able to do that. Remember, whatever your desired dose is in, you must change your concentration to. So if your desired dose is in micrograms, change your concentration to micrograms, and then reduce it down to the 1 milliliter mark. Okay, And we just divided it by 50 there. And our reduced concentration, again, is 10,000 micrograms per milliliter. All right, let's practice this one time. We have 20 milligrams of des desired dose. Our concentration is 25 milligrams and 5 mLs. They're both in milligrams, so that can stay. We just need to divide it both sides by 5, and we end up with 5 milligrams and 1 mL. All right, so our reduced concentration is 5 milligrams per milliliter. That's a common concentration for cardism.
Cardizin commonly becomes comes packaged uh, 25 milligrams and 5 milliliters, and you reduce that down to 5 milligrams per milliliter. All right, so let's do another practice. Desired dose is 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute of dopamine. You've got 400 milligrams in a 5 ml vial, and you have a 250 ml bag of normal saline. So let's take that 5 mLs out. Let's add that 400 milligrams. And now we have that 400 milligrams of dopamine in that 250 milliliter bag. But again, our desired dose is in micrograms, so we're going to have to convert the concentration to micrograms. So we just simply add three zeros. We, we've, now we've got 400,000 micrograms, and this is pretty serious math. Okay, you could do it longhand or just use your calculator. 400,000 divided by 250. You've got to divide both sides by 250 because you want it down to 1 mL and you end up with 1,600 micrograms per milliliter, and that is a very common reduced concentration for dopamine. All right, so the main goal here is to figure out how much, or to figure out how you're going to deliver the dose, and you always have to get your answer in volume or drops per minute form. All right, so that's what we're going to learn in these next few lessons. How are we going to get this answer into a volume or a drops per minute form and you can't give a dose in just a milligrams form or a grams or uh, micrograms. You got to be able to get it into that milliliters or drops per minute. And that's what the next few lessons are going to teach us. All right, so keep practicing and come back for lesson three.